What is up guys? All right, all right, all right, Kakis here. And today, oh my goodness, it was a big day for Destiny 2. A ton of information from a ton of different sources flooded out about the new season, Season of the Drifter, starting very soon on March 5th. And in this video, we're going to go over all that information from all those different sources. So if you've just seen the Vidoc, I guarantee you'll learn something new in this video. And so let's just jump into it because there is a lot to go over. So like I said, this brand new season, Season of the Drifter, starts March 5th. But there's a big, big change, and this is something I want to get in the very beginning of the video because, you know, alter your calendars, alter your plans, call in sick, because normally, you know, with the last season, Season of the Forge, and with the previous season when Forsaken launched, we had a week buffer zone where the new season technically started and it was just a week of kind of the same content. The new pinnacle weapons were released and by the way we're going to talk about the three brand new pinnacle weapons with Season of the Drifter soon. But then a week later the actual new content with that expansion came out. This time that is not the case. The new content is going to start dropping on March 5th as soon as the new season rotates. So really importantly, keep that in mind. Now, what is this new content going to be? Well, I mentioned pinnacle weapons, so let's go over the new ones. Just like how in last season you could get the mountaintop for PvP, the loaded question for Vanguard, and the breakneck for Gambit, those are being updated with Season of the Drifter. So now for PvP, you can get the Recluse submachine gun. Kills with any weapon improve this weapon's damage for a short time. That's a really interesting perk. Normally, to improve a weapon, you have to use a weapon with stuff like Kill Clip and Rampage. But this lets you get a kill with your Luna's Howl, for example, and then if you uh, run up on someone close range, you switch the Recluse and have it be doing a damage bonus. Really interesting and could be really powerful depending on the degree of that damage bonus. Moving on from there, for the Vanguard, we have the Oxygen SR3 Scout Rifle. Dragonfly deals more damage based on the number of precision hits made beforehand. Wow, so if you're fighting a yellow bar enemy and you have to shoot him a lot, that Dragonfly could potentially deal just a ton of damage, maybe take out the yellow bar beside that guy or significantly weaken him. Um, that's just really solving one of the main problems of Dragonfly, which is it's great against the low tier adds, but not so good against the high tier adds. This could potentially change some things, and I'm really interested to see, again, it depends on how much more damage it's actually dealing, how significant this bonus is. But just a Scout Rifle with Dragonfly is already a potent combo. Moving on from there, for Gambit, we have the 21% Delirium Machine Gun. Kills increase this weapon's damage until it's stowed or reloaded. So it's basically Rampage on steroids because it doesn't stop at times three stacks. It just keeps going and going and going and depending how big of a magazine you have to spare, how much damage it deals and how many kills you can get, you could potentially be outputting a ton of damage and that is really, really potent, especially in PvE when you're mowing down groups of adds. Now, moving on from there, let's talk about some of the new content coming with the Season of the Drifter. First and foremost, Gambit Prime. What exactly is that? Well, it's essentially Gambit played on different Gambit Prime specific maps. And also, there's only one round. You just go in, whoever melts the Primeval for that one round wins, and then you're on to the next game. So it's not necessarily going to be a three round slog fest like Gambit can turn into. It's gonna be a lot more fast paced and quick. But there are some more changes that distinguish Gambit Prime from normal Gambit. Firstly, in terms of melting your Primeval, they said in the Vidoc that you're gonna have to use somewhat raid style tactics in order to take down your Primeval. So potentially doing different things, solving puzzles almost, in order to be able to inflict damage, stuff like that. So that's a little bit interesting. But one of the main changes is the introduction of armor sets in Destiny specifically for Gambit Prime. And we can see all four right here. So we have the Reaper, and it says clear waves and slay larger enemies. The Invader, 
hunt your opponents and steal their moats. The collector, gather all the moats and send blockers. And the sentry, counter invaders and protect your bank. So depending on what set of armor you're wearing, you're going to get different perks. And those specific perks haven't yet been detailed, but you're going to get special perks that help you fill these four different roles. So if you have the invader set all on, obviously you're going to have the glowing red snake to kind of distinguish you. And you're going to get different perks that are going to, you know, maybe help your uh, damage, improve your reload speed. I'm just speculating here when you're invading stuff like that. But what's interesting is that you don't actually earn these armor sets for Gambit Prime in Gambit Prime. In fact, you earn them doing a totally different, brand new activity, The Reckoning. Now, The Reckoning is a new PvE activity. It takes place inside the Drifter's ball that he's kind of lugging around behind his ship. But actually, that is a portal to where the Nine are. It's a little confusing, but here is The Reckoning. So, there's new lore, of course, involving the Nine. Uh, it's a pinnacle PvE activity, and you can earn new gear, and that new gear is, of course, referring to the Gambit Prime armor sets. Now, the Reckoning is going to have several different tiers, Tier 1, Tier 2, and Tier 3, that get harder and harder and harder, and those are going to unlock as time goes on. So, I'm interested to see what that is all about. And it's pretty interesting that... You know, you have to play Gambit Prime, then go to Reckoning to earn armor, to go back to Gambit Prime, you're going back and forth between these two activities. Is that going to be a cool change of pace, or is that going to be annoying? Well, we're going to have to wait and see, frankly. But the armor sets are not the only new rewards coming. As you can see right here, there's a refresh to mainly the Gambit uh, weapons and stuff like that so we have a bunch of new things to earn including a new shotgun sniper rifle um sword pistol auto rifle hand cannon pulse rifle something i can't even tell maybe it's a linear fusion rifle scout rifle and smg and just like the previous season, I really hope there's brand new perks introduced into the loot pool of these weapons. And unlike last season, you know, with the exception of Feeding Frenzy, I hope these perks are actually good and competitive. And in addition to that, there's some more new things. Uh, there's some brand new exotic quests, and we're going to talk a little bit more about those in a sec. But there's also the introduction of Power Surge Bounties. This is going to help players who are far below the light level of 650 get up to uh they said in the vidoc 640 very very quickly so just in a couple of hours of this dlc or of this new season starting you're going to be able to surge up to 640 so if you're watching this video and you're like oh my goodness i'm not gonna have access to any of this content well you actually will much sooner than you think all right, so we actually have even more things coming this season, but to get an idea of what those are, let's check out the brand new updated roadmap. So as you can see, Crimson Days, Iron Banner, that's what just happened. That is what we've had. So starting just to the right of that is the new stuff with this new season. So we have uh, for all players, Gambit and private matches are being introduced and two new maps are also coming to normal Gambit. We have a power level increase from 650 to 700, new vanity rewards, and then we've also got a brand new exotic quest for all players. Now, this seems to be the Thorn quest. The Thorn, one of the most iconic hand cannons of Destiny 1, available for all players apparently, because Bungie did say in the Vidoc that the Thorn quest would begin week two. So very soon after the update launches, and if this is going uh, left to right in chronological order, it would make sense that that's the first quest, and then there's going to be a separate exotic quest just for annual pass holders later on. But in addition to that, we have new Triumphs and Lore books, new rank rewards the revelry is going to be a spring event one of uh, the limited time events similar to crimson days the dawning etc we also have arc week i don't know what that is but that's gonna be interesting and some more iron banner with some new iron banner rewards bungie did say in terms of specific annual pass content gambit prime we've talked about gambit prime uh, weapons and gear we've shown the reckoning we've talked about invitations of the nine is a little bit different, however. Now, Bungie does say, uh, involving Invitations of the Nine, this used to be referred to as Zer Bounties, and it will be an exploration of the Nine and the mysterious place in the universe. 
And they say that the path begins with Zur on Friday, March 15th. Annual pass holders will be able to pick up an invitation of the nine from Zur. Once the objectives are completed, it will transform into a bounty called Into the Unknown. These will be available to complete once per character, similar to the bounties you got at the beginning of Forsaken for completing an activity with a full gear set. Week over week, for nine weeks, cheeky bungee, you'll collect new lore and powerful rewards. Pretty interesting. Now, in addition to that, we've got new Triumphs and lore books, Gambit Prime, uh, private matches with new map, uh, specific exotic quest to annual pass holders, and then an allegiance quest. Now, what exactly is that? Well, Bungie says, the allegiance quest, previously forecast as the Joker's Wild weekly quest, will invite you to choose between the Vanguard and the Drifter. Pick a side to progress through the quest from their perspective. This pledge is character based, so if you have more than one guardian, you can play both sides. Choose wisely. Pretty interesting. And then, of course, to the right of there, we have the brand new season apparently arriving in June. And as you can see, it's been changed from Season of the Redacted to now the official Season of Opulence. So that's a little interesting tidbit as well. So, that is the content of Season of the Drifter, but if you're wondering when exactly is this content dropping, well, here is the official timeline for this season. So we have March 5th, which is the upcoming Tuesday, we have Gambit Prime and Reckoning Tier 1 being released. Uh, there's a map, New Arcadia, for Gambit Prime, and private matches for Gambit are also being released on that day. Moving on, just a few more days, we have Reckoning Tier 2 being released. Then on March 12th, Gambit Prime is going to receive a brand new map, Deep Six. On that same day, the Thorn Quest is coming out. Now, either the Thorn Quest is an Allegiance Quest, and then maybe I'm wrong about it being free to all players, but then that's very confusing from the roadmap, or the Thorn Quest is coming out and an Allegiance Quest is coming out. A little confused by that little square right there. Hopefully Bungie clarifies that. But only a few days after that, on March 15th, we have Invitations of the Nine going live and Reckoning Tier 3. On March 19th, we have another Gambit Prime uh, map being released, Legion's Folly. Then on March 26th, we have the Emerald Coast map. On April 2nd, we have Gambit Prime. All maps are available and private matches for Gambit Prime are being released uh, on those two maps, New Arcadia and Deep Six. And then April 9th, Arc Week, whatever the heck that is, free to all players though. After that, April 16th to May 6th, we have the Revelry event, which is free to all players. Hopefully this is, you know, substantial, similar to actually the Festival of the Lost or maybe even the Dawning. We get some new activities, some new weapons uh, while this is going on. And of course, there is more to come. There's that second exotic quest that's on the roadmap that isn't quite here yet. Maybe that's combined with the Revelry. I don't really know, but this map is likely to change or update or go past May 6th at some point. But... For now, that is all we know. You guys are all caught up with the new Destiny 2 information today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it informative, and if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.